morning. It's morning. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, October 2nd. Yeah. If not, I'll fix it. It'll pop up down here somewhere. Plus, it'll be at the front of the video like usual. Anyway, haven't done a video. I haven't put out a video. I've done several and then I just didn't like them. So, we're going to try again this morning. And if you're seeing this, I was successful. The beard's fluffier on one side than the other. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, pothole. Uh, I'm on my way this morning to the school where I work. And uh, we are having intruder training this afternoon. So that should be interesting. Uh, I'm not usually big on meetings, you know. But I must say, generally, the meetings have been pretty, pretty good at the school. I mean, I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's because they're teachers and they understand things easier. I don't know. And the content is different than what I've been to in manufacturing. Uh, my last job that I had for almost 21 years, the meetings just were horrible. You know, you get a lot of how good the company's doing, and blah, blah, blah. You guys are doing a great job but we're still not going to do raises. You know, uh, we're making this much money, blah, blah, blah. It's all due to you guys, but, you know, you're not going to see any more of it. And then there's always, always, some guy there that thinks he has to rephrase the question so everybody else that understood it will understand it. Drives me nuts. You know, and <laughs> there used to be a guy there that would have to rephrase it several times. It just drove me nuts. And then, you know, open it up to questions and people ask questions that were already answered if they'd been paying attention. Anyhow, I just hated meetings, large group meetings. Now, some of the smaller meetings weren't too bad, you know, but meetings, not a fan, generally speaking. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of talk about what is going to happen the day after tomorrow. And I don't know. I don't really have a clue. Uh, if you haven't heard yet, there's they're testing, I guess it's a new system of notifying people nationwide. And it will be on the TV, on the radio, and on your cell phone. Even if you have it turned off, you will get this notice. If you have a phone, you will get this notice. Uh, there are ways around it, but that involves a Faraday cage some type so unless you've got some way that the signal can't get to your phone you're going to get this message and like I said I'm not sure what to think I've heard all kinds of things uh, but most of the stuff people are worried about the government can already do like they're going to be they want to pinpoint the location well, they can do that already. I mean, uh, if your phone is functioning, they can find your phone. Uh, years ago, see, our house got broke into, and you know, I got a talkative deputy. And he was telling me about a, a wreck they had had. A couple of cousins were racing down the highway and 
one went past the other. It's a two-lane highway, the, the one I'm actually driving on. But, and they, they were racing, you know, extremely high rates of speed, or as fast as their vehicles would go, which most vehicles can do 100 easy enough, and that's, you have a wreck that speed. Well, they had a wreck. One of them died, and uh, the other one took off. And the deputy was telling me they pinged his phone, they called it. <coughs> well, he told me that, well, we could get within 50 feet of him, but we couldn't find him, find the person. And so he got away. But so they already have the capabilities to find your phone. Your phone tells you. I shut it off on my phone, the location. But I'm pretty sure that if the government wants it, they can find out where it's at. But if I was that worried about it, I'd leave my phone at home and go do whatever I wanted to do that I didn't want them to know where I was at. You know, it's as simple as that. If you don't have it with you, they can't track you. But I don't usually do anything I don't want them to know about. Even though there's a lot of stuff that just we as Americans do that they really don't need to know about. Like my garden or, you know, how many pigs I got. They don't need to know. So anyway, I don't know what this is all about. It may just be as simple as this new emergency broadcast system. I know a lot of people are worried about it, and you know, like I said, everything I've heard that people are worried about, the government already has the capability to do and more. So uh, I'm not real worried about it. I mean, I'm no, I'm more worried about the CBDC, the central bank digital currency which has already started, they, ha they aren't mandating it yet, but they, it's, it's, it's in process. I haven't done much on it. I've kind of stepped back from a lot of this stuff just because it's tiring. It really is. So, uh, I don't know. Things aren't looking so good. I hope you're stocking some groceries. You know, just, I know I was in the grocery store doing grocery shopping yesterday. And I noticed, first of all, that there was a few empty spaces and some thin spaces you know what I mean by thin spaces they pulled everything to the front and you know that's all they had was what was right on the front of the shelf and, and I also noticed stuff being in places where it just really didn't make sense and either that either you have a stalker that just don't give a flip and just put stuff wherever or they're trying to cover up the uh, empty spots I don't know you know if you got an opinion tell me what you think and uh, maybe we'll have a conversation about it And I was at Wally World where I was shopping. The convenience of that place is just... Uh... Anyway. That's where I noticed all this. And I noticed that a lot of the great value stuff, you know, their store brand, that's what was missing. Uh, makes me wonder because that stuff and all of your kind of generic store brands, off brands, are made by the bigger companies. 
and uh, are the bigger companies just not making as much of this stuff for them or are people buying more of it because it's cheaper again what do y'all think so something's not right you know it's just we all know it and it goes I believe it goes beyond just a crappy economy. I mean, even a crappy economy is our, our grocery stores have always been full. You know, and if, a, if a company like Walmart can't get what they need to fill their shelves, then there's something going on. Could it be Walmart just trying to force people to, into the higher profit margin products I don't know maybe I wouldn't put it past them I'm not saying that's what's going on but it wouldn't surprise me uh, I don't know it's just something strange and you know but everything is strange all over the world uh, if I can remember I have something to talk about after I get done with this meeting that I found very interesting and uh, yeah but right now I'm almost to my destination and uh, like I said I'm kind of interested in, the, in the, this this is I don't know if I mentioned it but it's intruder training that's what they're calling it and I it, interesting because at my last job which was a Department of Defense contractor I tried I, I would talk to anybody that would listen about doing some training like this and they wouldn't even talk about it but anyway I'll be back in a little bit I think well won't be long at all for y'all okay I'm back uh, the uh, training was very interesting. Uh, it's a very good deal. And what the, what I liked the best of all of it, uh, you know, it's, there wasn't a whole lot that was new to me, uh, just because I think about this kind of stuff. And, you know, I try to educate myself on things. But, like I said, my big takeaway was that all of those teachers and staff took it serious. And at least a seed was planted. Now, you know, I also found it interesting that the ones who paid the least attention were the coaches. Just, you know, I guess they think they're so big and bad that they, they can deal with it. But, uh, yeah, all the, uh, like I said, all the teachers, they were all about it, you know. Which, you know, odds are in our favor that this will never happen. But that doesn't mean just because the probability is low doesn't mean that the possibility isn't there. So, and, you know, these people that do this kind of stuff, the, these people that come in and shoot up a school or a concert or whatever, it, to me, they tend to be cowards. Uh, you know, they know there won't be any resistance there. That they're going to have a certain amount of time where they have free, just control. I mean, they they have time to do what they want to do because you know it takes the police department time to get there. Unless there is an officer in the school. Of course, 
in my opinion, the best thing they can do is try to be as prepared as possible. Have a plan. And that helps a lot. And that's what the officer told us. And he had uh, two videos of the uh, shooting in Nashville, the school shooting in Nashville, which no one got hurt or killed in that except for the intruder. I don't like calling these people shooters because I'm a shooter. I'm not going to go shoot up school, but I like to shoot. I like to go out and target practice. I like to hunt. You know, I consider myself a shooter. And there are millions of us out here that, you know, we just, want, we just enjoy firearms. We're safe. We have no desire to shoot other people. Although a lot of us are prepared to if you put us in that situation where it's me or you. Just everyone in today's society. There's some things that you can do that doesn't involve firearms that will help you to not be a victim. One is being situationally aware. Be aware of where you're at and your surroundings. You know, know what's going on around you. Uh, you know, if you want to listen to music and you want to listen on here, but just put one in, leave the other one out so you can hear. You know, try not to get so involved in what you're doing that you lose track of what's going on around you. I know that, you know, me working in the school, there's people moving around in there all the time while I'm there. Well, for part of the time I'm there. Everybody's gone, it gets quiet, and I'm paying attention to sounds. As an example, I heard doors banging where there shouldn't have been doors banging last Friday night. So I went to investigate because I want to know what's going on. Uh, and come find out, it was no big deal, it was our maintenance guy. I don't know what he was doing, but. I saw him, I recognized him, you know, <clears throat> didn't perceive a threat, and there was no threat, so, <laughs> no problem, but just be aware, you know, like that, I know what the building sounds like when everybody's gone, of course, the doors that he had banged, you know, the doors that nobody goes through, usually at night. Like I said, I don't know what he was doing, but just be aware. Know where people are supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. And just pay attention to what's going on around you. And one, you'll know what's going on. It'll make you safer. And there's study after study showing that an aware person is less likely to be a victim than one that's not. Walk with your head up, looking around, paying attention. You know, you walk with your head down and, and walk with purpose. But walk, if you're walking around your head down, scooting your feet, you got your headphones in, you're targeted. I mean, just they're looking for somebody that's not paying attention, distracted, whatever, and someone they perceive as being weak. These are predators. You know, predators aren't necessarily brave. They're not going out to take on, you know, someone that has the potential to hurt them. If you're situationally aware, I've noticed the more situationally aware I am, the more guns I see. 
you know, more people in you know, the state of Missouri, state of Kansas, two states I spend most of my time in, we have a constitutional right to carry. And both states, I think they both still do, issue concealed carry permits, even though you do not have to have one in the state of Missouri now. Then I know where the guns are. And more than likely, if you're open carry, you're probably okay. Even if they're concealed carry, they're probably okay. But at least I know. I, I don't do anything. I don't say anything. I don't call them out on it. I just go on about my business. But I know who's got the guns. So. That's the main thing, just be situationally aware. I, I see it all the time. And even people walking down the road, they're not paying attention to anything that's going on. And they're just oblivious to what kind of vehicles coming at them. It's not just about guns, it's you know, cars, trucks. More people are killed in automobile wrecks than they are killed with guns. Not to get off topic here, but, and also, if you're in one of these situations and you find yourself close to the person, the bad guy, you need to fight. I mean, if you can't get away, fight. You have to fight. And you have to fight <laughs> like your life depends on it because it does. And most of these people that do this stuff, they're not fighters. They're, like I said, they're hiding behind that gun. But, like I said, I'm not going into any details because I'm not an expert at hand to hand combat. I've been in a, fight, a few fights in my life, but you know. And if you've ever been in a fight, you know, most people don't know how to fight. I'm not a fighter. So, and fight dirty. Bite, kick, gouge them in the eyes, kick them in the testicles, whatever you got to do. You know, if you can get your hand on that gun and control where it's pointed, even better. But, you got to fight. Don't just lay down and die. Just stand there and let them shoot you. If you can run, run. That's that's the best advice ever. If you can get away, get away. Absolutely, get away. I mean, and remember, and the police officer that did our little presentation today, he said it too. The Supreme Court has said that a police officer has no duty. They are not required to come and help you in that situation. So not only are they minutes away when seconds count, but they really don't have an obligation, a legal obligation to come in and defend you. you know, so the police not only may not get their time to handle it, but, you know, they don't have to handle it until, you know, the guy's out of bullets. Or they can take him and not risk their lives. So, keep that in mind. A lot of people don't understand that, that uh, the police do not have any obligation to come in to, a, to an active shooting situation protect you. Now, I would like to think that most of them feel like the officer that did our presentation today and you go. You know. But so like I said just be situationally aware know what's going on. If you find yourself in a situation like that 
If you can run and get away from it, do so. If you can hide, successfully do so. Uh, we walked through a drill, you know, and I don't know how much what went on because they sounded the alarm and everybody went somewhere and hid. And, you know, and I couldn't see what was going on because I did what I was supposed to do. But if you're down to you were the shooter, you better try to make sure it's the shooter if you want to survive and go on to see your family. These aren't necessary. These aren't. Not only are they not necessarily tough people, but they have no training other than video games. And they know how to point and shoot. You know, they know how to point the gun and pull the trigger. <clears throat> and like the officer said, <coughs> if it's not guns, it's something else. There have been mass stabbings. You know, that tends to happen in. You know, like England. And they still have shootings there, even with their strict gun control laws. You know, but there's all kinds of videos on the internet of how to make a bomb. And even if I knew where they were, I wouldn't tell you, but I do not go watch them because I'm pretty sure that will put me on a list somewhere. You know, I've been on enough lists. I assume, I don't know. But, okay, well, I'm home. I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope it's useful. So, let's look out for each other. Let's help each other when we can. And let's pray.